everybody. Welcome to For the Record. I am Khalil McKenzie, your host, and I am here with my former teammate, good friend, Tennessee legend, <laughs> Trey Smith, man. Uh, it's an honor to have you on the podcast. I mean, you know, we're good buddies, but uh, still just absolutely awesome to have you here. Uh, appreciate you taking the time, you know, and uh, current guard for the Kansas City Chiefs. Sorry, I'll give you a little bit of bio, but uh, uh, current guard for the Kansas City Chiefs, Super Bowl champion now, you know, so, uh, man, just just happy to have you here, man. Yeah, man, thanks for having me on, bro, and uh, you know, that was a great introduction, you know what I mean? <laughs> Low-key guy, uh, but that was awesome, oh, I appreciate man. it. No, 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 I, try, I tried to keep it like as, as like, you know, professional, but yeah. at the same time, it's my guy right here, so, uh, man, just happy to have you here, but uh, yeah, just to kick things off, man, just a uh, little bit about you, uh, from Jackson, Tennessee, man. Oh. Talk a little bit about that being uh being from Jackson, Tennessee, homegrown, mom and dad. Yep. Uh, what what did they mean to you? Uh, I know I know you lost your mom, and you can talk about that a little bit, and and what that kind of means for you, and and how it kind of drove you to be you know the person that I know you I know you are, but uh, what people may not know you uh, for you as they see you on the field, they they see the accomplishments, they yep. see all this, but but what kind of shaped all that? Yeah, uh, just humble beginnings, man. So, you know, going back to roots in Jackson, Tennessee, born and raised, uh, small town, probably about an hour outside of Memphis. Um, growing up, you know, a uh, Christian-oriented household, mom and dad, uh, one one other sibling, Ashley Smith, my older sister. So they pretty much structured my life and pretty much raised me and led me in direction, pretty much just finding God and how to be a man. So for me growing up, you know, I was, a, once again, a very Christian-focused household. Like, my grandfather was a preacher. My grandmother and my dad's side was very active in the church as well. So, for us, you know, family was everything, extremely important. We had great values, show respect to everyone, you know, treat others the way you wanted to be treated, you know, the basic rules that everyone should just follow. Yeah. Um, in my life, you know, just molding me, uh, I would just say my life's been molded through experiences and just hardships sometimes, like, when I was 15, my mom died, um, having to deal with that, um, you know, having to find the right college, right university to go to. Found Tennessee, had a good year, you know, hit with blood clots, something that affected my health. So I feel like time and time again, um, I get tested. You know, you get gut tested, you get gut checked. And, you know, for me, it's just like I always had to go back to my roots, man, you know, trusting and believing in God, allowing him to guide my path, you know, and then just staying true to the values, man, staying humble, giving everyone respect, you know, showing love anytime I meet anybody new. I like that. I like that. And then I think that's the the truest thing, you know, you could have possibly said because a lot of times we hear, oh, just work hard, just work hard, and, you yeah. know, it'll it'll all work out. But it's, it's cliche because it's so true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I mean, you're living proof of it. I've, I mean, I've been able to witness a lot of it, you know, seeing you go through the blood clots, knowing that you had your mom pass away, you know, seeing your recruiting process, knowing kind of how crazy yeah. a recruiting process, excuse me, like that can be. And then seeing you flourish through it all, you know what I'm saying, is is something that me personally, you know, as your friend and still just as somebody who watches is something that you truly admire. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and you see that, yes, it is serious. If you just keep going forward, if you just have – something to fall back on saying this, these are my roots. This is who I know I am. And I'm going to just keep pushing forward. You can be Super Bowl champ. You know, <laughs> you, can, you, know you can, you yeah. can, you can accomplish what you, what you set out to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and that's why I applaud you so much. And I think that's something that, you know, people will see it on the field. They'll, they'll see the accomplishments and they'll, they'll be like, Oh, like it was tough. And it was great <laughs> to see him like person, you know, but like hearing that, you know, yeah. it's, it's different, you know, and, and, and getting a chance to get that little look. So I appreciate that, man. And Absolutely. Yes, sir. We talked a little bit about you being from, from Jackson, Tennessee, and how you, you know, you talked about it formed your roots and who yep. you are. Being from Jackson, Tennessee, but but now kind of seeing more of the world, seeing more, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and I mean that. But I mean, my sister, you know, uh, went to Union and, uh, and my – you know, my dad's from Tennessee and all that, so I, I love Tennessee. I went there, obviously. Um, but I'm saying just, you know, seeing more of the world, do you think being from somewhere else, I mean, I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and then moved to California, and it's a culture shock, but learned a lot of different things, a lot of all that type of stuff, and, you know, was went from no offers to, excuse me, a bunch of them and all this type of stuff. But do you think being 
from Jackson was the only way, you know, you could have kind of formed these roots or do you think if you were, you were born somewhere else or grew up somewhere else, do you think, you know, Oh, you know, this could have been good for me to experience this, that you maybe struggled with later on or anything like that, you know, just, just, just anything. Yeah. That's something I like ponder a lot, man. It's like, yeah. I feel like everyone should at some point, like, what if I grew up somewhere different? Yeah. Like, would I be the same person? Especially us from, like, small towns. Yeah. Like, we're, you, know, you know, we don't, we didn't know a lot. You right. know, like, we just knew what we knew. Tighten you know? it. You're going to the same place, same yeah. spots. Not much to do on the weekends. Everyone's hanging out the same food places. But, like, I think that those experiences sort of molded me. Like, for me, it was just a great sense of community. So, like, anytime my family went through something or – Vice versa, anytime anyone needed something like the tightness of everything, like you go somewhere, okay, you know, my aunt, I'm, I'm shopping at Kroger, you know, she sees someone that she went to school with, or, you know, obviously I have classmates and stuff, I see them, so it made it a lot easier. But, you know, you got to think about it sometimes. Like, what if I grew up in like New York City? Yeah. You know, I go to a massive high school. My, my graduating class was like, 80 people total, yeah. bro, like high school, 400 people total. Yeah. Then I go to, I go to college, it's like, you know, it's almost culture shock a little bit because mm -hmm. you're talking to dudes that, you know, they had a, either a thousand or a couple thousand people in a graduating, in a graduating class. class yeah. It's just like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like, what in the world? <laughs> you, can't I even, you can't even imagine. Can't yeah. even fathom it. So, yeah. you know, I'm thankful for my experiences. I think it, it best suited me as a mm -hmm. person. I would just say, you know, if I had a, a bigger experience in like a bigger hometown or a bigger city, I feel like I would just be maybe a little more sociable, if that makes yeah. sense. But I, I, I enjoyed my experience, you know. Yeah. No, I, and, and I hear you on that. I'm, I'm the same type of way because, you know, like I said, grew up in. Green Bay, Wisconsin. So, you know, it's uh, that small town feeling like I'll, I love my hometown. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I couldn't imagine being from anywhere else. And and I also, same thing. It's like you think about it all the time. You're like, if, like you, New York City is a perfect example. It's like, what if I grew up in New York? Like, <laughs> like if this is, be? yeah, like I get on TikTok right now and I look at TikToks in New York. I'm like, what if I grew up around this? Like, what type of dude would I be? You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, it's just, you play those games in your head, but, you know, I, I can you can't go back and change that. You know what no. I'm saying? It's just, especially when you when you have those people that you just know so well back home and you just know they truly do care about you. Yep. And every single thing you do, you feel like a piece of a, a piece of that victory for you is like for them. To, you know what I'm 100%. saying? And not, you know, like you owe them nothing or anything like that, but just you want to for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, just knowing how much they care and how much they mean to you. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, I, I looked at looked a little bit of your high school football stuff. Okay, I can't lie, um, but uh, you know, I of course because you know we got to host you a little bit when you were recruiting, all yeah, that type of thing. But, you know, but uh, got to look and see because I mean, until I went to California, I mean, I was on a high school team where we, you know, we won our first conference championship in what thirty some years, mm. and you know, we were a good team, you know, that came from kind of being nothing and all that type of stuff. And so I kind of get all that not being on great teams. Never never one state lost lost it twice, you know, that type of thing. So yeah. it's like, what's it like being on a on a team where it's like, ah, oh, maybe we're not the best. We can compete now. You know, yeah. we'll compete. We we want to and all that, but we might not be the best. But going to a college where, you know, we have – we got stars everywhere, you know. Yeah. Even, I don't look around the league. We got stars that yeah. are, you know, still out here playing. And we had guys, but you're just not putting the pieces together and all that just as a team, but still being able to be the the loudest presence, you know, on yeah. the field, then transitioning on the into the NFL and and, and playing among stars, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Winning a Super Bowl. And still your play style being one of the loudest, you know, like on the field, like yeah. what, what's like that mentality, you know, like, what is that? What is that like? Like it, cause we, we all understand like as football players, like what the team aspect of it is, mm -hmm. you know, like what it means to, to want to win, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. What it means to like not win, you know, at yeah. the same time, like what it means to lose. And, and so when you have that type of play style and that type of, you know, attitude when you play just product that you put on the field, you know, and because yeah. and, film doesn't lie, you know, how does that, how does that mentality come about? Like, how is it, doesn't matter what's going on around me, I'm going to do my job, do it very well, yeah. affect people around me, you know what I'm saying? Try and make this better and still shine no matter what. Yeah. 
I have like a, a long winded answer to this. So <laughs> it's, it's it's really weird. Um, obviously, you know this. So like growing up, you're like the big kid. You know, you're starting playing football. Everyone's looking at you to be like the leader. Yeah. It's just like you know, as a, a big kid, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be aggressive. You're gonna be mean. You're gonna be one of those dudes on the field. So it's like something you have to develop over time. And like I remember my high school coach so vividly telling me like you're too nice on the field. Like when you're in practice, okay, these are your friends, sort of. Yeah. You know, they're so you still gotta go mess them up. But like when you're on that game field and it's that time, no one's your friend. Go attack. You know, you show no, no one mercy. So for me, it was just learning how to sort of flip the switch. And then in high school, it's like everyone is looking at me to be the leader. I'm the alpha in a way, you know, not taking anything away from my teammates who work their butts off every day with me. It's just yeah. like I'm a six five, almost three hundred pound dude out there, you yeah. know, lifting yeah. weights. Like I, I gotta go out there and go berserk. Yeah. You know, they were lying and they they're looking at me to be that guy. So for me, it was sort of that mentality. I had to play both ways, being from a small high school. So it's like no matter what the situation is, I know the dudes across the ball are gonna try to attack me, possibly hurt me, harm me. So I'm showing zero mercy on that field every time I'm out there. And it's just like it carried on to college, you know. I, I got to give you your, uh, your credit, man. So, like, <laughs> you gave me my praise. I got to give you yours, man. So, like, <laughs> as a kid trying to decide what college to go to and, like, you know, you're on the social media game early on. You're just watching, like, dude, you were one of the dudes that I always looked up to. Like, okay, I want to be close to this dude. Like, I remember I would go on visits. It would be, like, you, Drew Richmond and stuff. And this is when, like, early early getting recruited by Tennessee maybe like a freshman or a sophomore and like watching you interact with dudes and like first off I was like watching on the sideline with my pops and I was like okay I was like 265 65 at the time I see your big ass like walk across <laughs> and I'm like yo I have got to up my weight yeah, like yeah. I gotta get stronger <laughs> if I'm about to block this dude like I yeah. gotta get right like and I'm and I'm thinking the other thing like how can I possibly lose weight like I <laughs> Bro, I'm like, how can I get, bro, I need to get stronger, man. Yeah. Like, I got to go block him next year. I'm yeah. like, bro, I got to step it up. <laughs> so it was just like, man, it's so small things. And, like, Canada to Tennessee, like, one of the, I know we both feel the same way. Like, when we were there, we wish we could have done more. You know, yeah. we just had more yeah, success. Nothing. Like, you know, watching those guys see this year and watching university change, it's awesome to see it. Yeah. But you almost have a little bit of FOMO. It's like, yeah. Dang, I missed yeah, out on yeah, that, you know, but yeah. that's part of our, our, our story, our journey, man. We can't do anything to affect that. And, you know, going to the Chiefs this past year, being able to play in that organization and being able to sort of see that that championship um, um, culture, you know. So when I first got there, obviously, first year we didn't win it. This past year we did. Yeah. But, you know, listen to EB, like I remember one of the first days we get there, he talks about the championship uh, standard. And our ultimate goal is, you know, win the AFC, get a home field advantage, go win the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, and hearing those things, it's like, man, talking about it and then bringing it to fruition where it's like, okay, no matter what happens, we have the same goal, same focus in mind that we're trying to get to. So it was so cool seeing all that, like, come together, being able to win the Super Bowl. And it's like, dude, in all my years of sports, I've never won a championship. Yeah. And I would always tell my friends, I'm like, yeah, man, I've been playing all this time. I, I'm not, I haven't won anything. Not middle school, like not yeah. little league, yeah. like I haven't won a thing. So That's like crazy. to get a Super Bowl, man, it was like it all came together and being able to see my family, my pops, my sister, my girl, you know, it was awesome. That's awesome, man. That's I mean, I, I get chill, man, because <laughs> it's like, well, because that's so real, and you know, like knowing that it's it is it's so difficult to win. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I went to went to Dallas South High School, yeah. you know, the perennial best high school in the in the nation, all this, and uh, in California and all this type of thing, and we go to state and we lose. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Next yeah. year we go to state and we fumble the ball on, like, the two-yard line on a play that we ran all season. I don't, I'm not even playing that year, but I'm still like, golly, this is crazy. You yeah. know, so, like, yeah. not winning and then, you know, like, being able to win, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's that's huge. And you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's that's awesome to see. And, and knowing that, that, t that you laid groundwork the whole way, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, because – like you say, like I mean, I appreciate you saying that about me at Tennessee, and and I like to think that at least we laid groundwork because we were able to get guys like you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, guys like Nigel, like guys like you know, Batuli, and guys. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I, everybody else, who I didn't say. I'm just for the sake of <laughs> time constraints, I ain't gonna name you all. 
Um, but like, you know, getting you guys, like your class, the class that you like, yep. we got guys who are like great people. Like Marquez Callaway is one of, like, Quez, I'm, man. shout out to you, Marquez. Shout like, out that, Quez. That's, Up that might Quez. be, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that might be one of the best people in the world. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. And he's showed, you know, that he can play and all this type of thing and mm-hmm. things like that. So like, I think the groundwork has been laid and seeing those guys at Tennessee, like play this well that this year, uh, I think that 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 made me feel really good at the same time. Like you said, of course, there was that little like, dang, like I was. Yeah. This was fun. Like they, <laughs> they like, throwing the they throwing the goalposts in the oh, river. Like man. oh man, like that looks great. Like you know all those type of things. Like it, it looked great, but knowing that there's a foundation that that we did put there. You yeah. know what what through the ups and downs that that we contributed to. You know is yeah. is pretty awesome. So. Um, that's a, you know, without a doubt, that's, that's cool to hear, um, without a doubt. So I got, uh, something here that I need you to give me some more insight on. And, uh, I'm going to look, let you take a look at it first. And, uh, so you can get a nice look at it. Yeah. And then I'm a, then I'm gonna let the uh, camera see it. I got, I just, I got one simple (laughs) question. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is what we got right here. So, uh, so yeah. But uh, my uh, <laughs> my only question is, why didn't you put lotion on? Because <laughs> the, the, the knees, the knees, the knees are nice and ashy, bro. And I'm just you know like it looks like it look you know you got the the khaki shorts on, so I'm yeah. like okay school dress code. Yes, you know 100%. so I'm like okay so that means hair looks pretty done you know like a recent ish haircut yeah. you know what I'm saying like it. You know, you you obviously you look mean, you know, uh, of course, but you know, so yeah. there's there's some preparation that went in, but no lotion, bro. It that that okay. One, it was a cold, it was a cold morning. That's the first cold thing. Morning. But you wore shorts. To I, I I know, bro. So look, look, look. The dude, if I remember correctly, this was like a pinch, like early morning. Dude was like, okay. I wake up in the morning, and guys. Like, okay, we're gonna take some pictures, blah blah. blah. Yeah. And like my coach is like, you got to come down here, maybe. Right after, like, first bell, take these pictures, and you're, like, gone. So I'm pretty sure I had gym class somewhere right after that. But, like, I had no intentions of taking that photo. Yeah. And if you could tell, like, I'm not looking angry. I'm looking annoyed. Like, yeah. I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. Like, I already have photos, all the different things. So, yeah, no excuse for the lotion, though. You know what I mean? It was cold, though. I was supposed to be wearing sweatpants, probably, or, like, oh, longer man. khakis. But, yeah, I didn't want to take those photos. Uh, trust me, I have I have some horrible pictures yeah. from high school out there. You know, and I... Yeah, I just, it's what it is. You know, yeah. I lose every argument once a picture gets sent in of me in high school. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that is what it is. But I just, I had to, I had to get one, I had to get one in there. Um, no, nah, man, but uh, to kind of pivot, you know, a little, to a little bit more, less serious, I guess, if you yeah. will. But uh, I got, I got one question. When, when are you going to pay Nick Allegretti? For that number seventy three, man. I mean, Nick's a good guy. I, yeah. I feel like there's there's got to be something he wants that uh, <laughs> his name's Coin Guy. There's coin Guy be Gritty, a Coin man. out there yeah. to get number seventy three. I mean, it's gonna be a that cost a pretty penny. That's <laughs> you can't miss that opportunity. Uh, no, nah, man. Uh, sixty five is sort of just stuck now at this point. You know, when I first got to the Chiefs, I was like, dude, I want seventy three. You know, it's always been my number. Yeah. And then you know. Once I've seen the jerseys roll out and I've sort of just built my brand off of it, I'm cool, you know. Yeah. And Nick's coming back for another year. Yeah. But, you know, if he didn't, I was thinking about it. I was like, <laughs> maybe I would switch it. But I want to stay true to the 65, man. Yeah. I, I'm really rocking. I'm digging it, man. I like it. And I like it. And and there's something to that, building building something new, building mm-hmm. a brand off of kind of what it is. I feel the same way. I mean, I'm number 69 now. And I, yeah. I've started to literally just love it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like. It's just something where you're just like, okay, cool. Like this is, this is me now, you mm-hmm. know. And and I love to hear that building your brand around that. And like I said, I, like you know, Nick's a great guy, and and I was happy <laughs> to hear that he was coming back too. Oh, and, yeah. and everything. So, you know, that's that's awesome. But uh, I had I had to ask that one. I was like, man, this man, <laughs> I know that seventy three is is is. It's a, it's there. Yeah. It's it's there. You know, I was like, I, I know Nick's a good guy. He would he would at least hear the argument. He would hear it you know, he would hear the <laughs> argument. He would, man. Um, but you no, know, yeah, that that's awesome. Uh, my next question, mm-hmm. it's uh it's a late night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, you're you're 
you're on your way home, but you're uh, you're you're passing through Cumberland Avenue, okay, in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, some people call it the Strip. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> what is the meal that you're taking home with you um, that night? Okay. So you know me. You know I love food. Yeah. I, I, oh, I I'm do know. foul with my food, I do. man. I do. So. <laughs> So I was thinking about this a little bit. I'm like, Gus's Good Time Deli mm. has mm-hmm. to be like up there, up there on the list, man. You it can't is, beat the burger, is. the price. That that's got to be a number one. Okay, a basic one. I'm gonna put McDonald's in there. Mm. Okay, sort of got to throw okay. that in there. Uh, Studio X was a weekend. I yeah. gotta get some crack wings, man. Got to. I'm not, I'm got not to. leaving the shirt out. There's wings. shout out, shout out, boo. Yeah. Shout out, shout boo, out, man. man. Uh, shout out. Just you know. Keep doing what you're doing. Gotta get it. You know, yeah, I gotta have it. <laughs> like, you gotta go have it. There's, I gotta have it. There is like, no, there's no option if the X is open and it's a weekend. Yo, I'm getting the wings. I'm popping by. I don't care the price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got take, to. take my money. Shut up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Every time. Yeah. No, I love it. But yeah, those those are probably my top three, man. Just keep it simple with those. I like that. I like that. I, I have a. Oof. I gotta say that uh, that cookout is on mine. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't beat a cookout tray, uh, and the cookout tray didn't ever do me wrong. Yeah, I can't it, lie. Um, Taco Bell is up there for me. Yeah, um, it's it, unfortunately, you know, but it's up there for me. I spent way too much time telling you. Yeah. About, hey, I'm trying to tell you, man. I, Taco Bell's up there for yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, there was, there's no way. That I couldn't put that one in there. And then this one's not a night, but it's the morning after. Yeah. When it was there, Oscar's taco shop. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Being in, and the crazy part about it is like, I felt like, you know, growing up in Wisconsin, I had no, no right to judge a taco. Yeah. No right at all. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely zero right to judge a taco. But then I moved to California. Yeah. I had a taco. And so, you know, <laughs> now I can judge a taco. Man, Oscars, that was solid every time, every, every single time. time. And so those those would probably have to be my three if I if I had to do if I had to do three. But I mean, your your choices, I mean, were all gotten at yeah. some point in time. Yeah, at some point, <laughs> so it's really. like, man, that was a that was one I you know, that's Everybody knows. Yeah. If you if you know, you know. If you were in the University of Tennessee at any point in time in your life, you know how much the strip means to you. What it, what's happening now is going to be crazy. I was just know? about to say yeah, that, man. That'll be what, crazy. Are, what are they doing, man? <laughs> All these food spots we're naming. New, like we were gone, talking about man. earlier, New York like, City. Uh, the strip's going to be New York City, I guess. All housing now? Yeah. Like, where am I going to get my late night fix? Yeah, I mean, you know? <laughs> you got <laughs> like, to have your key card. Get dude, into, come get on, into man. Your just apartment. get some food, man. That's <laughs> just crazy, food, man. You know? I don't. It's I don't see it. a direction, but you know what? I'm not there, but I wish it was also there, you know, hey, untouched you know. a little bit. Well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I just think about the traffic. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. You got, all, so you got all them people yeah. on games, on any, I mean, on anything. Just traffic's living, gonna yeah. Be, yeah, traffic's going to be crazy. The strip was always already congested yeah. all the time anyway, so. I can't. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it looks like it'll be cool. You yeah. know, it's like, it's kind of like out here, you know, what, why I tell people, Frisco's, you know, such a cool place to come out here and live, you know, moving out here. It's like we're getting Universal Studios and yeah, PGA yeah. Uh, headquarters and all this stuff. So it's like, excuse me, you see all this change and stuff. And you're like, oh, where are they going to do this or how are they going to do this? And then, excuse me, you start to see it go on. And you're like, oh, okay. So I'm keep I'm holding out hope, you know, because yeah. you got Neyland's renovations and yep. all that stuff. So I'm, I'm holding out hope for everything that, that it all looks good and they keep the. The classic feel to it, because I gotta say, I'm you know we small town kids. You know? Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't. It's still, I still barely know how to work my phone. You know, yeah. so I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, man, we, I don't need too much change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but no, uh, stand, stand. You know, kind of outside the realm of, of a uh, football. What's what's kind of one thing that you wish people knew about you? You know that that kind of. You maybe haven't, you know, let people see or what, you know, it's just something that, you know, people don't ask you about. You know, what's yeah. what's what's one thing that you kind of wish people knew about about Trey Smith? Yeah, um, it's weird. I guess I could sort of be like an artist sometimes. 
where it's like okay. drawing, painting, anything of that nature. Yeah. Um, just respect for the arts, you know, even like acting, just anything in that whole space and realm. Like I've always been so sports focused, sports focused. Yeah. It's just like there's more to myself. More than that. Just, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's probably the biggest thing I'm trying to figure out now, you know, early in my career now where I'm, where I'm at. It's like how can I sort of let that side of me, you know, come out? How can I express myself a little bit better and just put like myself that. out there more as well? I like that. I mean, okay, see you out there. Hey, <laughs> man, go be in the next Avengers. Tyler, man, hey, watch out. Watch out. Yeah. Oh, you see Usman. Yeah. Usman he going to be at uh, at Marvel premieres for life. That's yeah. <laughs> that's really all I think about when I think about a, a Marvel movie. Like, I'm like, once you end one, you just get to go to all the premieres for life. That's yeah. that'd, be, that'd be it for me. Just put me in as a stand-in, and I get to go to premieres for life. Tough. Um, yeah, tough. that's very tough. <laughs> to put me on the red carpet. I'm going to be the guy who makes sure everybody has a great time. <laughs> like, that's it. That's going to be me. Um, but no, nah, man, like, that's that's awesome because, you know, that's that's a question I, I love to ask in the locker room, especially in, like, training camp. It's like if you knew, knowing everything you know now, you know, do you think going back, would you still play football? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Would it have been like your – number one driving force or would you said nah man i i love watching medical shows like i would have just been i would have put all this time and effort into being a doctor you know what i'm saying like would that have been would that have been your calling you know what i'm saying like just just like asking guys that because i think it i think it stirs up good conversation and you know talk within teammates and stuff but you know that's that's something that's that's really interesting it's like what else? Like I would have never. If you, you know, you knew me in college, like you wouldn't have been like, oh yeah, Khalil would just be on a podcast. Like maybe, <laughs> maybe like you could have seen, like oh yeah, like uh, I would have seen that you love to talk to me. Like, but you weren't thinking about it then. Like yeah. I wasn't. I was right. not thinking about doing this or oh. anything like that. I, I mean, I barely cooked. You know, I cooked sometimes <laughs> in college. Like, yeah. you know, now you, I mean, you can't pay me not to cook. Yeah, you killing know? it, <laughs> killing the barbecue, it. man. But like, Good Lord. it's. <laughs> But like, but like, it's those type of things. It's it's finding those those things that really are interesting and, and kind of you know passion you're passionate about, mm-hmm. and just kind of pursuing them because you never know. Like I said, shoot, who, you what you gonna say if they say, oh, actually, come on, be in an Avengers movie? You are gonna be like, I bet. You know, yeah. you're not gonna be like, nah, like I'm yeah. good. Like I'm gonna <laughs> no, say, I'll be like, how, hey, how quick <laughs> exactly, you need? You know what you I'm know? saying? Yeah, like, 100%. so that's that's dope to hear that. You know, and and shoot, who knows? You know, you might. That's the thing about. It. I always say like that's one thing I wish I could do is either either sing or like draw because like I have horrible penmanship like yeah. I can't even like write you know I'm just like golly like I just missed all that like I <laughs> I still tight looking at the keys like all yeah. that I'm like I'm, <laughs> I'm behind on all that stuff so yeah. you know uh, like hearing you know they're passionate about that stuff is cool man it, it's really really cool um, and then another one how many people. Only call you Henry. <laughs> yeah, man, the Henry moniker, man. Uh, so real name is Henry. Obviously, it's out there. It's out there. I'm it's really out Henry. There. It's out there. Sorry, government. If, if, Sorry. You, if you call me Henry, I won't get upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you call me Reginald, I will get. No, I'm I won't get. I won't get upset. You can call me Reginald, dude. The only people who really call me Henry is anyone that's like affiliated with the government, and it always throws me off. I'm just like Henry. I'm like, oh, it's me. It's me. It's me. I'm bad. You know, like. My sister might like mess with me and just call me like Henry Smith or oh you know what Maya my girlfriend she yeah. if she's like mad or like she wants to mess with me like she'll say that yeah. that's the only two people that like that's really funny. give me grief but that's you funny. know pops obviously Henry Smith Jr. Yeah. Yeah. you know I'm the third so yeah. he's never actually just called me Henry I don't think I can remember in my life but I feel you my I don't think my dad's ever called me. Yeah, and I'm just like that'd be so weird. Yeah, <laughs> like, ah, I'm gonna do that again. You know, I had to like, ah, shake that off. Yeah, like, right, right. <laughs> but nah, yeah, I, I definitely hear you on that. I'm like, every time somebody calls me Reginald, I'm like, so, I'm like, oh, like, who are you again? Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, who are you? How do I know you? You know, right. it's like yeah, I have like a couple friends. Like, uh, like one dude stood out like a senior when I was a freshman. Like, he only would call me Reginald. He's like, oh, Reggie? Like, your real name's Reggie? Like, I'm only calling you Reggie now. And Micah, Micah Ab. Yeah. Like, yeah, he'll only yeah. call me Reggie. You know, so, like, people like that. You know, I have, like, a couple, but this is funny when you have, you know, being that junior, the third, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm interested, like, you know, because now Trey, my, my my son's name is Trey, but his name is Reginald Cleo McKenzie, the third, you know. Yeah. So, it's going to be funny to see, like, 
how far he goes with with Trey and like right. you know like or if that just sticks or well obviously I think it's gonna stick but it'll just be funny you know yeah. is he, is he ever gonna be like no nah, I want people to call me Reginald I'm like it's gonna be interesting bro because yeah. like that's how it was with me so when I was really young you know before even kinder like preschool early early like just daycare days they would call me Henry and I would be like my name's Trey you know like, yeah. I'd get mad like I'd buck <laughs> up it's just like. He's going to decide eventually at some point where he's like, okay, Trey's going to say or Reggie's going to say. So yeah. it's like, it's a cool thing, though. Uh, I felt bad because I feel like in the back of my mind, I always feel like it sort of hurt my pops a little bit. It's just like, yeah. dang, he don't want to be called Henry. Yeah. <laughs> but like, he's my like, sister was just. I named you this. Yeah, 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 like, you know, he wasn't my name. Yeah. Like, so my sister, she's the one who really uh, messed it up for everybody because, like, she would just make fun of me. She's like, yeah. Henry's an old name. Like, I'm like, man, <laughs> shut up, right, Ashley, yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> So, like, I would yeah, always. Can't, nah, you can't get away with that one. Bro. No. Nah. So, that, that's sort of how it always played out, man. Nah, I hear you, man. I, yeah. I hear you on old name, Reginald Henry. <laughs> they didn't give us no chance. No. Nah. Well, no, not at all. <laughs> we big, you know. We had yeah. no chance. We had nah. no chance, man. Uh, going back to KC a little bit, you know, talk to me. How, just me knowing you, mm-hmm. how perfect of it, well, me knowing you and being somebody who lived in Kansas City for a little bit. So I know a little bit about the, that area. Yeah. How perfect of a city is Kansas City for you? Yeah. You know, for, because, I mean, well, again, knowing how crazy the NFL is, yeah. kind of your a little bit of your story, seeing it, you know, and just everything. How perfect is it just to be in Kansas City and to win a Super Bowl for Kansas City? <laughs> you know, so you've, you've already hit the pinnacle there, but, you know, it's just playing there and, and living there and, Aside from I ain't, I ain't talking about, you know, coaches, team, all that, yeah. you know, <laughs> any of that type yeah. of stuff. We won't get into that. I'm, this isn't ESPN. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, you know, how perfect is that city for you? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's been a – it was a blessing, man. And, like, I'll tell you, to like, the draft time, like, it was between Kansas City and another team. Mm-hmm. And um, I talked to Duke Manyweather. I'm down here training with him. He's been my guy um, ever since before the league. And – I remember just telling shout him, like, I was, dude. yeah, shout out to the dude, you know? <laughs> so, like, bro, I was telling him, like, this is, like, third day of the draft. <clears throat> My agent and stuff, you know, we were thinking probably third round latest, blah, blah, blah. Never get the call. So, now I'm freaking out. I'm like, man, maybe my medical history has made it to where I'll never play in the league. They'll never yeah. give me a shot. And he's like, dude, just chill out. Stay calm. Look at Creed. Like, he just landed in Kansas City, a great spot, great organization. Like, everything will probably, like, work out, man. You're going to be fine. Five minutes later, I'm not even kidding. I get a call, Kansas City. I'm like, man, why are they calling me? Because I always thought I was going to another team. So I'm like, why yeah. are they calling me, man? So answer the phone, ends up being a doctor. He's like, man, I told you I was going to call you back. I'm just sitting there like, okay, what do you want? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I've already worked this out. You're yeah. wasting my time at yeah. this point. He's like, we're going to make you the newest member of the Kansas City Chiefs. So I'm like, whoa. It didn't really hit until uh, Clark Hunt. You know, Mr. Hunt got on the phone. He's like, we're really welcome. We're, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. Add you as a piece, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, so now I need to lock in. And Coach Reed, obviously Coach Heck. Yeah. So, like, after that moment, I'm like, okay, whoa, I just went to the Chiefs. Like, I watched them win a Super Bowl in 2019 as, like, yeah. a student worker at Tennessee. Yeah. But, like, man, being able to play there, the city of Kansas City, like, honestly, it's a perfect fit. It's not too big to where, like, it's almost overwhelming. I can yeah. get away. I can have a little country spot sort of in Lee's Summit. Yeah. You know you know about Lee's Summit. Yeah. Like, Lee's Summit, man. Yeah, Shout man. out Lee's Shout Summit. Summit. Great city. Great city. So, it's like, it was perfect. The food's there. It's great. I'm a people person. So, like. My interactions matter on a daily to day basis. Like if I walk in a gas station, I open the door, I want to thank you, you know, yeah. or like, you know, just saying what's up to people on the street. Mm-hmm. You know, the people are very nice, they're courteous, but like I love Kansas City, man. And I think I couldn't have landed in a better spot, yeah. especially early in my career to develop. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. And I echo that. I I loved I love my time in Kansas City. Yeah. You know, I thought it was a as as much as it was kind of small, you know, as for me, it's it's weird for me when I'm in, like, a big city and it still feels small. Yeah. It's, like, weird for me because I'm, like, why? well, then why is everything so big? I'm, like, yeah. why do I got to drive 50 minutes to the airport? You know, I get, like, mad about, like, little things like that. Um, but like, <laughs> it's like, I'm weird, man. I'm weird. Uh, but, like, that's, that's, like, the thing for me. But, like, it's uh, – it's it was, it was such a cool city to be in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, the downtown and, you know, I don't know, just, just everything about it. Like you said, yeah. Lee Summit, you know. People were cool. Loved. I used to go to the dog park all the time. Yeah, you know things like that. So it's like, you know, just just really cool things. Um, Different vibes throughout, man. Exactly. Like you can really find your vibe in that city. Exactly. You really, really can. And 
I won't even, you know, get into barbecue because I don't want anybody to get offended or nothing, you know. Yeah. Shout out. Excuse me. Sorry. Wow. I edit that one out. <laughs> that was wild. That was wild. That was that was wild. That's that's just gonna probably have to just stay in there. Was not ready for that. I mean, shout out to as I was saying, shout out to all you know KC barbecue. To be yeah. honest, I mean that's all super good. You yeah. know, I I cannot lie to you. I, I don't think I went to a, a bad barbecue spot. Yeah. You know, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, I, I won't give no favorites, no nothing. Uh, <laughs> um, so I I want to go back to to UT a little bit. I won't list all your accomplishments at UT. There, the list is quite long. Just Google Trey Smith and go to the UT <laughs> website if you if you want to find out. Um, the the list is long. You know, just being honest and. Um, I know that you you made a promise to yeah. graduate, to get your degree. How big was that promise a factor in accomplishing all these other things? Because you didn't just get your degree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I made a promise to get my degree. I have not got it yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like it's something like, it's like, you know, I want to do it, all that type of stuff. But you accomplished all these other things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On top of that. So how big was that promise and, like, you know, go back to – your roots and all that type of thing and, yeah. and whatever it was, was how big was that a factor in, you know, hitting all those other landmarks too? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the degree, uh, was one of the biggest promises I made. So my mom got sick when I was 15. Like I remember one of the last times I was able to actually visit with her, um, at her bedside, I told her, you know, one, I'm gonna get my degree. Cause you know, my whole life and you know, my sister, she can tell you the exact same thing as well. We were a very um, educationally focused family. Like yeah. education first. Like, boy, if you don't make <laughs> you don't make an A on this <laughs> test, like you're not playing the game. Yeah. Like yeah. you're not on your phone. You're not gonna go to football. Like you're you're gonna do your class and schoolwork first. So yeah. for me, you know, always putting education first, putting an emphasis on that ever since I was a kid. So I was like, man, I'm gonna get my degree. That's why I came to college. I'm gonna finish that out. And then the second thing is I told her I was going to play in the NFL. So for me, it was a matter of like upholding those two things because that was the promises I made to her. I never saw her again. Yeah. So like for me, it's like I always want to live my life in a way that she would be really just pleased with, yeah. you know. So for me, I remember even like going back for my senior year, like that was a big um, deciding factor for me. So like I just want to go ahead and get my degree, yeah. go ahead and finish that out. Um so for me, man, that was really one of the the utmost things I wanted to get accomplished. I hear you. I hear you. And that's that's big time, man. You know, and that's that's awesome to hear. And whew, again, you know, not not the chill chills, but it's like, man, like you know, that's just you hear you say that. You know, it's a guy like me who, like I said, I made that promise too. You know, yeah, get my degree, and I still haven't finished it. It's like, you know, like get your butt in there. And finish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like kind of like that. It's like one of them feelings. So it's, you know. Yeah, like I said, it's it's great to hear that and, you know, knowing that, you know, you did accomplish all that stuff, you know, and seeing you do it. And like I said, seeing you flourish on the field, off the field, you know, and, and like I said, now winning, winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, all that stuff is, is really cool to watch, you know, and appreciate you giving, giving little people a uh, little, little background and, and seeing a little bit of that. But uh, like we, like we got this guy uh, behind us, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We got the uh, the the dark night behind us. Um, I know you're into a lot of a lot of things off the field too, like you yeah. said, art and, and and acting and things like that. So, um, I know you're an anime guy like oh, myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what are what's 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 your favorite anime you're watching right now? <sighs> That's a bad question, bro. I've been slacking the mm. anime department bad. I think the last one I saw was Blue Exorcist, so okay, and that yeah. was good. I really good enjoyed show. that good one. Show. I haven't I haven't finished Blue Exorcist. Yeah, I have started it. It's a uh, it's like one of those ones where you see it on TikTok and you're like, oh, everyone's like, oh, the top t top show that you if you haven't seen. It. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, I gotta make sure I watch. That was, that's how I felt with like Death Note and Tokyo yeah, Ghoul and man. Code Geass when I like watched all those and I was like, all right, like let me just like grind through and like watch all these shows and yeah, you know I'm still trying to do that but still keep up with like new shows and everything like that. Mm -hmm. All my friends hate me because I'm that guy who, like, watches. Like, I just watched the new My Hero episode that came out yesterday. I'm just like, I'm that guy. I'm like, I'm watching it the day of, like, 
sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I yeah, can't we'll wait. You know, that. like <laughs> I'm not letting them stack up. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to binge and roll. I need to know right now. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, like everyone's like, I'm like, why would you watch the first part of the Attack on Titan final? Uh, before the second part comes out, then you just have to wait for the second. I'm like, I don't play. care. Like, I was oh, like, man. I'm watching that. It was, fan- <laughs> like, it was fantastic, <laughs> man. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I, I definitely feel you on that. I, I got to get on that Blue Exorcist. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So what are, what's, uh what's going to be your top three all time then? I still feel like, I haven't watched enough to give like a, a really good one. So like for me personally, I I'm just personally gonna put Naruto as my number one. Yeah, I mean, maybe. like it's, Naruto. There's nothing wrong with that. It's my number one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, folks will attack you about it, man. Like, hey, I, I, I wish people would attack me about it. Yeah, yeah. Like Naruto to me means so much. Like as a yeah. kid, man, watching Tsunami. We ha- we couldn't stream back then, so like I would I would try to keep up week by week, and then one week you're out of town, you're doing something, you miss an episode, and it's like what the hell is going on? Yeah, you know. So for me, being able to catch up on that, get everything with Naruto, like that's my number one anime for me. Then I would put probably hero, uh, not hero, excuse me, uh, Hunter X Hunter. Mm. I love bro, Kiwa Gone, Leorio, to, shout out Leorio, God. like I, I love, got to, I love it, man. And then that. probably last one I finished off like either. Probably just Attack on Titan. I like that. And that's hard to put even that low because, like, yeah. I love that. But those those are my top three right now. And, and that's the thing. That's the thing about anime. Like, honestly, like, I feel like your top three can be anything as long as it's three good shows. Yeah. I'd be like, you you have a great top three. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And those are three great shows. So it's like I have no problem with that because Attack on Titan and Naruto are both in mine. The only one that's, that's also in there is... Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I haven't seen that it. That is a. I haven't seen it. Woo. Edward and Alphonse is, oh. Yeah. It's I, like love, that. I love me the Albrecht Brothers. You know, it's, yeah. I think it's a great show. And, and I like, like you said, like, you learn so much from Naruto. Like, people are always like, oh, you got Naruto tattoo and stuff. I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, it, but it, like, means something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's, just, I'm not going to get into it right now. I, yeah, I would, but it's like, you know, it's, it's getting that stuff, but it's, you know, this, Anime and all that, like I tell people, I'm like, excuse me, it's not just like shows, you know, like mm-hmm. these are these are normal shows, you yeah. know, to people in another country. So it's like people in Japan, like this is normal, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like we watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians and Real Housewives <laughs> and yeah. Law and Order and all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Other people watch other stuff. Like this is like it's just different than what you you know are used to watching. You know, it's always. It's like funny now that anime is cool because it's like I feel like I still need to defend it, but it's like <laughs> it's cool now. Like everybody's like, like you, know, was, you, got this, you know, like this is cool. Like we got this, in the yeah. back, you know, like this is is what you what you want to do, but still feel like you got to defend it. You're like, nah, it's not just like you know, like fun stuff to watch. Like this, yeah. is good stuff. Like there's you watch. I mean, listen to Irvin Smith give a speech about anything or just talk. <laughs> and tell me you don't learn something about life and and perseverance or something. You know what I'm saying? Like there's yeah. there's no way. Like it's just I mean these these shows are they're good. You know yeah. what I mean? So um that's what that's what I love about anime. I love putting people on anime shows, yeah. you know, so that's that's my big thing. And I like Blue Exorcist. I like that you put me on that. I need to need to get back on that one and yeah. finish out that one. So that'll be good. But uh I think it's time for the quick hitters, man. Uh, the quick go. hitters. I don't know if you're, uh, I don't know if you're ready for them. Um, we got a little <laughs> quick hitters for you. Just some little fun questions. Yeah. I think you'll like them. I think people will like them. So, you know, <laughs> uh, there's one in there that I'm, I'm very interested to, to hear your take on. Um, but first one. Yeah. Flying. Or invisibility for your superpower. Which one? Which one are you picking? Ooh, um, man, I feel like I always wanted to fly. Like flying would be so cool. So I'll just go flying. I like that. And I think when it comes to invisibility, it's like, all right, I can just turn invisible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm still just gotta walk around and stuff. Like I, yeah, like I am invisible. Yeah, you know, like I'm just super sneaky. Like, yeah, you know, like I'm. 
I don't know. I yeah. don't. I don't know if that that does it for me. If I can fly, can I still be three hundred pounds and fly? That'd be kind of cool. That'd be wild. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> be kind of like, like, I like if I'm if I'm invisible and still three hundred pounds, the floor is still gonna creak when I walk <laughs> on it. You know, I'm like I didn't really gain anything <laughs> there. You know, so it's like if I can fly, I can just float across the loop. Gotta get a late night snack. Just <laughs> probably with a water burger. You know what I mean? <laughs> not, quick, not, not, not water burger for me. Yo, no, no. Not what a bird in and out, in and out. Okay, my sorry. Bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you're gonna hate that's me. very serious. <sighs> no, it's okay. I'm, I'm not even gonna get into it, you know, it's just, for another day. What a yeah. trash, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, not, 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 yeah, not, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not even gonna get into it, you know, yeah. It's, it's okay, uh, it's, it's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't put that. That question's not on there, in and out or what a burger, so. It's like matter. you and Brady for Hoko, bro. Yeah, I, I, I go at it all day long. Bro. I'll go at it all day long. Bro. In and out all day long, man. <laughs> shout out Shake Shack. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Shake Shack. Um, but keep it on, on the topic of food. Uh, mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing to cook? I know you, you've started to get into cooking and me, you know, doing the same thing, kind of getting into cooking and, you know, especially during COVID and stuff like that. Trying a bunch of stuff and figuring out, I like a whole bunch of different stuff, you yeah. know, or I can cook a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, what's what's your favorite thing right now to cook? Yeah, uh, for me, it'd probably be between steak and ribs. Like, there's nothing better than cooking a nice old steak, man. Yeah. It's like the overall <laughs> prep process. You're getting it ready. You're smelling as we're being prepared. Like, there's nothing better than that. Yeah. Uh, ribs through your guidance, you know. What I mean, I got my little rib plan set up, but like, dude. When you cook your ribs, man, and it turns out perfect, there's no better yeah. feeling. You're sitting back, just relaxing, kicking back, and eating it, man. So mm-hmm. those two, I couldn't really relegate it to just one. I hear you. I echo that. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, like you said, there's nothing better than, like, preparing a steak and then cooking it. Like, oh. the whole process is just – it's one of my favorite things to yep. do. Like, I don't care how many steaks I cook. Every single time, it's just like, ah. Yep. <laughs> you set it over to sear. You – Put it in a however you want to cook it. You put it yeah. in your oven. You put it in your your grill. You you um, hang it. You're over the real fire. Whatever you do, you know, yeah. cooking a steak you cannot beat. And I, I hear you, and I appreciate the, uh, like the shout primal, out again. On the, yeah, it's almost man, primal. It, it like. really is. Like it's just like it's a it's a spiritual yeah. <laughs> experience for real. Like <laughs> that's why I, I I tell people like cooking is my my time to just kind of be with myself like yep. it, it it really calms me down it, it keeps me just kind of super sane and you know you just you get to just do it you know it, there's nothing wrong with you know trying stuff and it not going well either like that's what that's why i tell people all the time like you think i cook everything and it's just like great no like it's like yeah. i will i still can't cook hash browns it <laughs> makes me really mad like really really mad like yeah. i just can't get it right so it's like they're too salty. Anybody want to help me out? I was like, I can't do it. But it's just, <laughs> but it's like little things like that. It's just like, you know, you you just learn that this is like super fun and yeah. can be super relaxing and super good, you mm-hmm. know, and and you know, good for you, all that type of stuff, you know, on top of it, good for your wallet, yeah, you know, too. That's the About. the biggest thing. But you know, um, man, them ribs. I, I will tell you, uh, the first time, I I like didn't want to like cook pork ribs for like a really long time. Like, so I just didn't, yeah. you know, and I only did beef ribs and they were, they were great. Like I love beef ribs, you know, and, and, and they're awesome. And then I cooked pork ribs. One time I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just get some from Costco. I'm going to just make me some ribs. Followed a super simple uh, recipe on Traeger. Shout out, shout out Traeger. Yeah. You know, they, shout out Traeger. I, I said, yeah. you know, whatever you want to cook on, but you know what I'm cooking on. You know, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm cooking it, on, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, you uh, you, you follow that three, two, one. Yep. You know, and 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 really, you know, with every with every cook, I always tell people it's like, oh, well, I tried to do this exact thing, or I followed this recipe, and I'm, I'm like, okay, but like every single cook is completely different. So like, you just gotta like actually watch and like you know, kind of pay attention and and just know your food. You know what yep. I'm saying? That's when it comes. That's when I think it comes down to, like, do you know how to cook? You know what I'm saying? Anybody can follow a recipe. Like, I I don't hear people when they're saying, like, oh, I can't cook that. Yes, you could. You yeah. can follow a recipe. Like, it's just, read. Just read. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you can't read. Like, okay, we got yeah. a different conversation we're having. But, you know, like, it's – if you're just, you know, 
that's when it's you know how to cook. You're paying attention to what's going on, and you're you're finding the little tweaks that are gonna be what's gonna make this like for real. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's gonna be the kind of biggest thing there. Um, but yeah, man, you cannot be you cannot beat a great, great, great uh, set of ribs. Nothing better. Um, the next one I got for you. It doesn't matter who they're going against. If you have, when you hear the, the question, if you have somebody for them to go against, you can you can pick one. But pick someone, anyone in the world, to do a circle of life drill. And like I said, it can be against anyone. Like just for everyone out there at home, circle of life is you get everybody gets this. Me and Trey know because we did circle life against each other. Lord have mercy. Oh, uh, circle life. Everybody gets in a circle. You got two people get in the middle. It's your old fashioned bull in the ring, all that stuff. Just imagine two. Big old people running into each other and trying to move them. You know, that's that's what it is. Yeah. So if you could pick anybody in the world yeah. to have to do a circle of life drill, they're in full pads, all that type yeah. of thing, you know, safety first. Um, they just have to do a, a, a circle of life. Who are you picking? All right. To One. win or lose, by by the way. It doesn't have to be to win. You know, it could be to just go out there and get destroyed. You know, yeah. just... just if, if I have, oh, golly, no, I was about someone <laughs> else too. Golly, all right, all right. I, 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 hey, you I'm know gonna, what? Wait, this is my dog. We gonna give you two. Yeah, you no, know, we gonna give you two. All yeah. right. So, so first one I'm thinking about, um, and he would be my like. We're talking about like medieval times, mm. time of kings and stuff. Like oh. this is our champion. You know, okay, like okay. Half for uh, Bjornson, Ooh. the mountain, basically, man. Who's gonna beat the mountain? There's nobody. You line uh, the mountain down, <laughs> and it's like attack. Yeah, he's he's he, gonna yeah. win. You he's know, he's gonna win. So oh. I'll, I'll I'll put him down that as my number hurt. one. I'm just thinking about a circuit life. Like, think about if he actually put on pads. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, if you put on pads and and they said like you got to circle it up with Dude. half Thor. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm hurting coach. No. Like, no, like nah. I'm straight up. No, I'm I'm gone. Yeah. Like, I'm straight up done. Like, I'm, I'm not. not I'm not going against a mountain. No. Are you kidding me? Not. Like, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a very good one for a definite win. Because I can't. That's off the top of my head. I can't think of nobody who's beating. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. Thor is definitely. Um, I'll probably just stick with him, man. And then maybe another one would be like, let's say we put like uh, someone that people would want to see, maybe like a Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. But in his prime, in his prime, ah, like what would he do? Give me, give me a country boy. Yeah, from I won't even just say Tennessee because it'd be cliche right now. Yeah. From the South. Yeah. Oh, I got one. You know him well. Ben Cleveland. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would be banned against Arnold in a circle of life. Good Lord. Yeah, that's a pay-per-view. You know, that's a pay-per-view. <laughs> People got to pay to see that. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, that'd be wild. That That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. I can't give Arnold just a surefire win either. You know no, what I'm saying? No, that's no, why I think no. that's a good one. I would love to see... Whew, there's a lot of people, so I'm just like pick one out of my head. I would love to see <laughs> this. Is it's just been she's been popping up on uh, Netflix because they just added the movie to to Netflix and all that. Jennifer Lawrence uh. in the damn circle of life, I think it would be hilarious. She she literally <laughs> was the Hunger Games. She's yeah. Katniss, Katniss Everdeen. You know what I'm saying? Like she's the survivor. That's kind yeah. of the whole point of the entire. Show, movie, whatever. Yeah. You know, like, people like that. It's like, oh, my gosh. Like, I want to see. Because uh, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the little celebrity special forces show that was on Hulu or whatever. I think mm. it was on FX or whatever channel it was on. Um, I was watching some of that. And, you know, obviously, I know people in the military and stuff. And they're like, oh, this is, you know, like basic stuff they're doing. But yeah. still just, like, watching them do it. And they're just like absolutely unable you yeah. know it's just like yeah. this is kind of wild to see like i'm like i mean i did you know we did the program you yeah. know things like that like on top of just being a you know being a football player is not easy guys you know yeah. newsflash just in case you know you still you still are one of them people who think it is it's really not you know but you know just like seeing seeing them do that and everything like it's like golly man like is it this hard? You know, like, mm -hmm. is, is it really truly this hard? Like, I I see it. You know, you yeah. act it out or whatever, all this type of thing. It'd just be, I don't know, it'd just be funny to watch, I think. And, you know, obviously I could think of massive people to, 
<laughs> go in there and wrestle with other massive humans yeah. too. But I think that'd be funny. Uh, and that one just kind of stuck out, especially because it's Netflix. Um, next one, because mm-hmm. you're a let, let's call him a, a, an aficionado of both um, hats mm-hmm. or boots. Ooh. I'm going to go boots. Mm. That one, man. Good cowboy boot, man. Man has spoken. Good work man boot. Man has spoken. Golly, man. The cowboy <laughs> hats, hats are cold, man. I was man. like, you literally have an emoji. You know, now, yeah. I'm pretty sure they made the cowboy hat emoji for you. They did for a yeah. while there. Yeah. But, ah, that's a tough decision, man. I don't, I'm still going to stick with boots, man. You know, at the end of the day, you got to have a good boot. You got to have good you. footwear, man. I get a boot on right now. This isn't the type of boot he's talking about. Um, I I mean, I'm not a, you know, I won't call myself an aficionado of either. I don't know anything. Um, I would love to get a pair of boots one day. Yeah. Especially living here in Texas now. I feel like it's something yeah. I have to have. You know, go to a rodeo someday or something. You know, all that type of stuff. Obviously, we were literally just talking about going and, and doing some stuff. There's a circus in town and all that. And, mm-hmm. You know, this is kind of the nice part about being hurt, like, Actually, this time when I can do stuff, this is the first OTAs. I'm one of them guys. I'm missing OTAs. You know, I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like crazy. It's just like a, I finally actually have this little bit of time. But, uh, um, but no, yeah, I, I like that boots. I, I definitely, I definitely hear you on that. I think yeah. they look sweet, dude. dude they're cool, you know, man. Boots are cool. You can like, get some, man, the detail on them too. Yeah, you know, right. you talk about the different type of leathers they can make, mm-hmm. where it's had more not, obviously, but. Yeah. The detail they put into and the craftsmanship when you really just peel back the layers of them and just watch it, man, it's so cool. Yeah, without a doubt. So, I definitely hear you on that one. Hats, hats, the same way. You know, we're not yeah. we're not disrespecting hats. Hats Nothing are taken away. definitely the same way. But boots are pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, and then last one, you know, and then we'll wrap it up. Is mm-hmm. since this is for the record, um, what is one record that you think everyone should have? And for the people who don't know, a record is an album. I know it's 2023. Some of us were born <laughs> in the year 2000. So we might not know <laughs> what a record is. Yeah. You know, but uh, what, what's, what's one record that you think everyone should have? Man, that's a, that's a hard one. Um, so I'm a big Kendrick Lamar guy. Mm-hmm. Not everyone jives and vibes to it, man, but it's a pimp of butterfly, man. Mm-hmm. That That's my I one. Like like, that. I have that on record, like, that's my one thing. You know yeah. what I mean? So everyone can have that. Or Drunk by Thundercat. Yeah. Or Vibe. Okay. So okay. Those two. I like that. I'm a, a man of a man of culture. <laughs> a man of culture. Yeah. Um, I love I mean, I'm a um what's it called? Uh Section eighty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. Kendrick. I mean that's come on. Yeah. I'm a I love records. But you know, it's when you when you listen to a you when you can listen to something all the way through Kendrick and like you we can just listen to every track yeah. you know what I'm saying every single time track after track after track and just like these are hits and that's why you have that's why I think things like records are so pure and so beautiful because it's like I don't want to just listen to this on my phone sometimes I want to be able to literally sometimes put in some effort and like listen to this yep. you know what I'm saying like sit here and just listen yep. you know what I mean and <clears throat> I think it's a you know kind of a great uh, kind of microcosm of what you know, kind of we got going on. It's like, yeah, it's it's cool to be that guy who you know just everything went well for, mm-hmm. you know, and all that type of stuff, and you can just listen back and oh shoot, everything just sound good. Like it was first round, this all this type of yeah. stuff, like everything was good. Or you know, like man, I had to put in some work for this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, little baby said it. It feel better when it came out the mud. You know yeah, what I'm man. saying? Like it, it really do. You know what I mean? And and, and like I said before, man, like knowing you, you know, as just my friend, you know, we, yeah. we've started the podcast now. We're past the professional and all that. It's <laughs> as, my, as my as my man, everything like this is, you know, to see everything, to be a part of some of it, a small part, and you know, get to see you go through everything and to see you flourishing now in the way that you are too. And you know, you stand out dude, you know what I mean? And yeah. to win the pinnacle, you know, and to know everything, you know, you kind of came th- and to learn more stuff today, even, you know, it's just, it's awesome. You know, it's yeah. awesome to see. And, 
and I appreciate you for sharing with everybody, and I appreciate you, you know, coming on here with me and, oh, yeah. and, and talking and, and spending some of your time. And, man, you know, I just wish nothing but absolute best for you. And, I mean, I, I, I hope you know that. And <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I just can't wait to just continue to watch your career and watch you as a person, you know, and come over anytime, you know, yeah. UFC fights, you know, we got – the man coming yes, up here soon. We got Adesanya coming up here soon. It's it's, oh. it's time. You know what I'm saying? Oh. But, uh, but no, without a doubt, I appreciate you, man, at all times. And, you know, you're an awesome guy. And, and appreciate you for coming on for the record. Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me, brother. Yes, Always love, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.